Nine schools in the black country are celebrating tonight after winning a high court battle against the government's decision to scrap a multi-million pounds rebuilding programme. A judge ruled that a lack of consultation amounted to an abuse of power. Sandwell Council mounted the legal action along with five other councils after the Building Schools for the Future programme was cancelled. But tonight the government said there was nothing in the judgment to give schools any hope that more funding will be made available. Holly Lewis reports. The library at Stuart Bathurst Catholic High School in Wensbury is one of many buildings badly in need of repair. Last July, the school was told it was one of nine building projects in Sanwell which had secured funding, only to have their hopes dashed a couple of days later when the government admitted that was a mistake. The council mounted a legal challenge in October and today it was told the judge had ruled in their favour. The council leader claimed an historic victory. I don't want to gloat because this was never about me, never about Samwell Council, it was about our kids. Those are the kids that are our future and generations of them now will have the chance to be educated in a decent school. But it doesn't look as if the builders will be turning up any time soon. The government also claimed a partial victory. The judge is clear that on the substantive points, was it a rational decision, was it a rules-based approach, did he create any uh, legitimate expectation of the money um, being paid. On all of those substantive points, the judge has upheld the decisions that the Secretary of State has taken. In Wensbury, there's still hope. It's an opportunity for this coalition government uh, to put things right and really to signal to the future voters that, OK, they made an early mistake with the rush and rash decision, we're now putting it right. At High Arkle School in Dudley, pupils grilled three local MPs at an event to celebrate the school's 50th anniversary. And today's development was a key talking point. We had no choice but to move quickly. Had we consulted for longer, then more contracts would have been entered into and more money would have been wasted. I think the building programme in Sandwell should go ahead. I think young people in Sandwell, uh, just as in Dudley, ought to, be treated, ought to be educated in the best possible facilities. The Secretary of State will now reassess the nine Sandwell projects. And the schools say while today's ruling is significant, it may yet be a while before they can move from these porter cabins into proper classrooms. Holly Lewis, BBC Midlands Today, Wensbury. Well, I'm joined now by our political editor, Patrick Burns. Patrick, first of all, let's talk about those Birmingham City Council cuts. We knew they were coming, of course, but they are incredibly severe, aren't they? They are, and Councillor Mike Whitby, the council leader, said that the city faces a gargantuan challenge. And I can tell you that's no overstatement. It actually reflects the sheer scale of Birmingham. If you have to chop £100 million plus around that figure year on year off the budgets, but at the same time, you know, you can't put the council tax up because that would be politically lethal at a time like this too. So at least I suppose the one thing we can say is that after many months of sort of educated guesswork, we do at least have the measure, I suppose, in broad terms of what lies in store over the next three or four years. Indeed, Patrick, just turning to Holly's report that we saw there, we're talking about Sandwell's legal victory, of course, over Michael Gove. Do you think it will do them any good? Do you think these schools will get rebuilt? They seem to think not, the government. Darren Cooper, the council leader there, is celebrating a victory at the expense of the Education Secretary Michael Gove. It's another embarrassment for him. He will have to go through a proper consultation this time, but the judge says that this will not really open the floodgates for other local authorities. So in the long term, the final decision still rests with the Education Secretary. Mm, indeed. You can be talking about this, aren't you, on the politics show? We'll be talking to Darren Cooper himself, and I'll also be joined by James Morris, the local Conservative MP, about this as well. OK, thanks very much indeed for that, Patrick. And uh, Patrick, we'll be back with the politics show, as we were just discussing, on Sunday at 12 noon. That's right here on BBC One.